in this tactic, we're going to talk about how important it is in inspiring your sales team and unleashing their creative thinking. We'll explore the importance of encouraging creative ideas from your sales team and how, more importantly, to create an environment that empowers your team, your whole team, all your members to regularly come up with great new ideas and contribute those innovative thoughts. And by the end of this tactic, you will understand the benefits of nurturing creativity. And you'll learn some practical strategies that are inspiring and rewarding to your sales team. Exercising, you know this, but exercising creative and critical thinking. It's vital for salespeople. They got to think on their feet. In order to ride in a competitive market, they, they've got to be able to come up with solutions on the fly. And these skills enable them to develop innovative solutions that address their customers' needs more effectively and ready to adapt to any changing condition or situation. And when you have a team of salespeople who regularly engage in critical and creative thinking, that enhances their problem-solving ability and creates these fresh ideas that in turn may help your company drive forward. However, if you are a monologue leader, if you are working in an organization that's all top down, where we're not creating an environment where your sales team members are coming in or being asked for their solutions, ideas, how to improve or overcome things. If these skills are not consistently exercised, they atrophy. And that leads to a very stagnant mindset, decreased effectiveness, lack of engagement. And just as muscles weaken without regular use, a salesperson's ability to think critically and creatively diminishes. When it's not being actively engaged and built upon, it diminishes. And this will result in missed opportunities certainly a lack of innovation. And in the end, you're going to have a, a decline in overall performance. There, it's crucial for you as a sales manager, as an inspiring sales manager, to consistently challenge your team to think critically, creatively, to ensure that these essential skills remain sharp and impactful. There's some other things that I'm going to mention too. Byproduct of you asking, creating this environment. And no matter whether you're a business owner, an executive, sales executive, marketing and sales executive, or a sales manager, you know your sales team is the driving force behind your company's success. Are you engaged there? The more you're listening to them, the happier they are motivated they are, the more inspired they are, the more they will deliver success to you. They will be able to weather storms in a way that is not as diminishing an outcome as other teams might. But you must keep in mind that even the most dedicated salespeople can fall into a rut when it comes to generating new ideas. Why is that? We'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's super essential to encourage your team to have the environment, create the settings for your team, to think critically, and in the end, reward them for their innovation. And it doesn't have to be monetary. Just recognition is often rewarded enough. So in this tactic, we're going to explore why fostering creative thinking in your sales team is so important and some ways you can incentivize your team to come up with great ideas. I'm going to 
tell a story first. I've told it several times, but I think it's the best story ever, at least in my career. Around if you you have an environment, you have a culture where you're always asking for ideas, they may not all be great, but every now and then you come up with one that is a game changer. Nothing that I share with you in any of these tactics in any of my training, coaching methodology, they're all things that I've done personally, that I've learned from, that I've found in Apple. And also I share the mistakes that I've seen made and I also have made. And it is with all that in mind that I share this story because I walk the talk. I walk it today. Some of the other companies I'm involved with, I have sales teams too. But it was this one back in my previous career where I had almost a thousand salespeople that were under the door chart under me, about a hundred sales managers, about a thousand sales. And I can tell you that I was always very open to opinions and ideas. In fact, even as an executive where I visited the team, I often had a, a crowd of salespeople gathered around me wanting to talk and share ideas. I loved it. I loved it. And it was from those ideas that kept our region and our company on top of their day. We were willing to listen. But we also gave them the ability to share these ideas and thoughts. And it was one of the things I did. And I did it with multiple different departments within the company. Is once a month I had a conference call with a group of salespeople. And each store was able to either appoint or choose or someone could volunteer to be on this call with Vaughn. And it was one hour of just sharing ideas, thoughts, sometimes complaints. But it was always under, we're going to improve things and we listen to you. And it was on one of these calls, just so happened my boss was listening on this. When a lot of other of my peers were really interested in what Vaughn was doing, what Vaughn's team was doing, that led to such great results consistently. And so my boss was listening in on this one, which was timely. And as I brought up the opportunity for them to share thoughts and ideas, Francis Nyling Kenday, who was a part-time sales consultant for us, brought up a challenge. It was a problem, but he also had a pretty good idea of a solution. I'll tell you more. See, a car max within a geographic area, we would transfer cars for free, take it from one location to another location, no cost or obligation to the customer. There were other instances where if a, a car was out of state, clear across the country, if the customer were willing to pay for it, we would bring it to them. It was a great value offering. At any given time, any given day of the week, I had three complete stores, which each held about 300 cars. I had three complete stores worth of inventory cars on the back of car haulers, moving free transfers from store to store. It was a big part of our business and one that was expensive, but it paid off in sales. But we had a very low close rate because it was free. On these cars, we transfer from one location to another, and we'd never see the customer again. Poor salesperson would call the call, get ghosted. And Francis, being the highly intelligent person that he is, brought up this challenge that, hey, we're transferring all these cars all the time. We're doing it for free. But maybe 10, 15% of the time, if I remember my numbers correctly, do these cars sell? No, they sold well enough that made it worth it. There was also a, 
an inventory balancing part of this, and I won't bore you with it. I'll sort of made it worth it. it. wasn't about selling the car. It was about having the right cars in the right location. But salespeople were only interested in selling cars, as they should. And Francis is bringing up the fact that a very small percentage, 15, maybe as high as 20% of these cars, when transferred free, actually were sold to the customer who facilitated the transfer. And he brought up the fact that he believed it was because he was proven right in the end that they would make the transfer, but because sometimes it would take 24 to 36 hours for it to arrive at the next location, that customer was still shopping. And when there's a about a seven day window that somebody's going to buy a car, they often, this is not just cars, it's in almost any purchase. They have about a seven day window that they're going to make this purchase. You never know where you are in that window or in like day seven or day one that they're going to make the decision. But it's that window. But even though they had initiated this transfer, they're still shopping. And they may, and often did, find another car that was suitable for them and another dealership that are competitors, and they buy that car. So they were out of the market. We had nothing that obligated or tied that customer to that vehicle that they wanted to move from one location to another. So without that emotional attachment to the purchase, they were still shopping. This was at the advent of the introduction of the iPhone. To him, Francis had recently received a new iPhone from Apple, Masters at Marketing, Masters at Selling. And he had talked about how when he ordered his phone, he got a notification, hey, we got your order. We'll fill it in X number of hours or day. When that phone was on the way, hey, your phone's on the way. And then before it arrived, hey, your phone's going to be here tomorrow. And then your phone's here. And he thought that was a really ingenious way to keep the customer informed and engaged with that car. But Francis had an even better idea which was hard to argue, is to be able to not only give them the progress, like the Domino's pizza tracker, of where that car was to keep them engaged with that car, keep them somewhat attached to that car, but making sure they had pictures of where this car was. It's on the truck, it's at the dealership. And back to my boss being on this call, we ended the call with the salespeople. I certainly, Francis, my God, that is a great idea. In my mind, I was like, boy, I wish I'd come up with that. But Francis did. Thank God I had a lot of really smart people working with me like Francis. Got off the phone with the salespeople. My boss was on the phone and we started talking. He says, wow, that is a great idea. And I said, I'm glad you were on the call. So I don't have to reconstruct that. He says, I'm going to run this over to IT, see what they think. I've taken a long story. I'm going to make it a little more brief. Within 30 days, we had changed our software. We changed our process. We tested it in the Los Angeles region, which I was responsible. So I got to benefit from the Francis's idea first. Very creative, very out of the box, something we hadn't thought of. And in the end, it was about a $500 million a year idea. $500 million. That's how many more of these free cars, free transfers that we set from location to location sold because of Francis's idea and us implementing it. So Francis, if you ever listen to this, I've told this story multiple times in different scenarios. Once again, I give you huge credit for that great idea. That's what this is all about is how can I put my sales team in an environment, give them the opportunity to share these great ideas, not only to exercise their 
creative thinking muscles, but for you and your organization to learn from them, they're out there facing the competition all day. They're facing the rejection because of something happening. Customers aren't buying from them 100% of the time, of course. What's the problem? What's the challenge? More importantly, what is a potential solution? And very often, they have a solution. Very often, if they're not working in a sales environment that allows those ideas, those solutions, those problems, those challenges to be introduced and talked about, they remain in the brain of that salesperson. Does them no good? Does you no good? So this is all about putting them in a situation where they can not only express themselves, bring these great ideas to light. There's a huge positive outcome in the way of engagement and motivation for them being able to do this on a regular basis. Like I said, I talked to, I don't know, it was 30 or 40 sales people, maybe less than that. Every month they had the opportunity to talk to almost two people away from the CEO. and get ideas, had other ideas. This is the one that stood out. Put that into your toolbox. Encourage them to bring you fresh perspectives. It's a common fallacy that only new people can bring fresh perspectives into a sales organization. Not true. Yes, new team members can offer some new ways of doing things, unique insights that we, they're bringing over from their previous experiences. But by no means are they the only ones that view your business from a different angle. Sales veterans too can bring a wealth of experience and different perspectives. And in fact, they might even be better equipped to spot opportunities that you can, that your bosses can. So it's really essential to encourage a culture of open communication and cultivate an environment where everyone feels empowered to share their ideas. That's why I always had a group of salespeople come after me, positively usual, when I went to visit a location because I listened, I wrote things down. If they had problems, I took care of those problems. That was a great sales culture that not only I contributed to, I was just setting the example around it. I had a hundred sales managers and 18 location general managers and others who exemplify that same culture, that same interest in other people's people who actually do it every day, their ideas, their thoughts, their experiences. It drives engagement, drives motivation. People tend to stay with companies longer under that kind of environment. Everybody's empowered to share in their ideas, no matter how unconventional I, they might be. It is, once you have this process, this environment, this culture established, how do I keep becoming? How do I reward them and encourage them, inspire them to keep coming with ideas? Well, let's talk about some rewards because when they come up with these innovative ideas, it's crucial to acknowledge it and make sure they get the recognition that they deserve. Rewards don't necessarily have to be expensive. Don't bring yourself down. This isn't a bunch of Starbucks gift cards, which I rarely ever encourage, that, but that should be meaningful. And you know what's the most meaningful thing you can do? write a letter, send them a note, send them a postcard, send them a card, thanking them for that great idea. They will keep that in a box, if not displayed somewhere for the rest of their lives. That's how meaningful that is. I've got several boxes and that sort of thing that have been weathed on me through the years. Does anybody ever work with me know that Long was always trying to figure out another way. I didn't get the nickname Maverick for nothing. But it can be a small bonus. 
But it's even more valuable to give them a public shout out, list them in the newsletter, post it on the break room wall. It's an emotional reward. Emotional rewards are very valuable. Underlying all that is you're showing your appreciation. And that gives them the motivation to continue thinking creatively. It's not involved with bribing them. Can't see it that way. You can't buy ideas. You can't legislate ideas. You have to create a culture that empowers and drives that. It's a feeling, it's an emotion, it's a safety that you can create. When it inspires and encourages teamwork, that's the bedrock of a successful sales team. And you, my friend, need to lead by example. You need to walk the talk, just not walk the talk. One of the best ways to get your team to embrace creativity is you be creative. But you need to be creative to and open to their new ideas, their creativity. And you have to also keep your ego enough intact and in check to acknowledge when you're wrong, when we've been doing it the wrong way. I, again, referring back to my old days at CarMax, Tom Foley are one of the best CEOs ever, certainly that I ever worked with in 50 years, would visit locations and he would have several usually two town halls while he was there. And there'd be 20, 30, 50 people attending these town halls. And one of the questions he asked 100% of the time is, what are we doing that's stupid? And you, you watch the room, the body language, and people are looking at their shoes and looking at each other. And what did he just say? He wants to know what we're doing stupid. He doesn't really mean that. And then he'd give it a pregnant pause to say, no, today, one of you, if not multitude, were doing something and you were thinking, why do we do this? It is so stupid. And that would usually create a hand going up. Tom, why do we go in the blank? Very often, Tom didn't know. It's the way we did it. How many things go on in your organization that never gets challenged? It's just the way we do it. Well, we've always done this. What we're used to. Jokingly, Tom would usually say, I don't know, Vaughn, why the hell would we do that? I'd have to be the one saying, I don't know, but I'll find out. And I would. But we were always open to continuous improvement, new ideas. We wanted those ideas. And we exercise that with our teams all the time. But, just because you've been doing something doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. Doesn't mean that your way is the only way. And you have to admit, be willing to accept the fact that you're wrong sometimes. And be willing to adapt and change based on either new circumstances, new technology, whatever the case. You need to be transparent. Inclusive in that I need as many people jumping into the pool of collective knowledge as I can get. And it's that creation of culture, trust that keeps it going. It's that locomotive of the great ideas that drives innovation. So many great inventions came from just a, what if we tried it this way? But you need to lead by example. You need to run your great ideas by them. Be looking to challenge the norm and help bring that out in them and listen to them. Maybe even embrace some risk-taking. One of my previous tactics talks about testing new ideas before we roll them out completely. Really good idea. Test it on a person or a team before you roll it out wide. I made that mistake. That's why I tell you not to. But this innovation, because it's different, it's a change. That was a risk, but we did with 
Francis's idea. There's there was, so, there was a cost risk in there and that you don't change software and IT for nothing. Why it's vital to encourage your team to take chances, be willing to think outside in the box. And it's 100% impossible to know if a new idea will work without trying it out first. I was last night watching a, a video with the CEO of Axon makes the body cams that for police officers and also make the, the tasers for police officers. Most people don't know that tasers are only effective about 50% of the time when deployed. And this CEO of, of Axelon, they had come up with a new form of a taser that was about 80 to 90% effective, not a hundred percent yet, but much better. Came from bunch of research and ideas and thoughts and sharing they not the in his organization is rejected. He looked at the advent of AI. How can we help police officers with AI? They developed a software that writes police officers reports as they're happening based on the body cue, the audio. So police officers spend half the amount of time that they are used to writing reports. You cut their time off the street writing reports, put them back on the street. They don't have to write reports. You literally double your police force without hiring us all. Think about that. But they're always thinking about new ideas. And he goes to his people. He goes to his team. He goes to other police officers. There's even been times that police officers said, that will never work. And he even invented it to prove them wrong. There's risk at all of this. And sometimes we're wrong. Even seasoned police veterans are wrong. Ones that do it every day. You run that risk. Okay. No risk, no reward. But a culture that embraces risk-taking, encourages experimentation, and creates a safe space where everyone's ideas are listened to, that you're able to improve it and derive growth. Innovation. And now, of course, it's smart to always balance a little pragmatism with your optimism. Can't be reckless. But with the right balance, your team can help businesses reach all new heights. Release that creative thinking. Drive that growth. Foster that culture of open communication. Incentivize innovation, lead by example, balance your risk taking, but don't avoid it. You will benefit and won't believe what great ideas you can get. And remember, rewards don't have to be expensive, but they do have to be meaningful. And contrary to some people's popular belief, creative ideas can come from anyone on the team. And when you've got team members regularly put into a situation or environment, a culture where they get to share their fresh ideas with you, whether it's private or public, make sure you praise them. Don't ever talk down about it. Reject them. Run out of the box. It may be the dumbest idea you ever heard. Please don't let them know that. A lot of dumb ideas turn into really good ideas. And it doesn't really matter whether their ideas are implemented or not, because you can't. You can't implement every idea that comes along. That's being pragmatic. Show your appreciation for bringing you the idea. Because you want them to keep coming to you with great ideas. But be sure you understand how to reward that. And it does not have to be monetary. This all drives engagement, happiness. It gets them in the mood. I heard that line this week. It was really good. I told them I was going to share it. This is about the fourth time I've shared it since I've heard it. It 
leadership gets people in the mood to do a great job. This gets them in the mood to help you as a company, as a, as a leader to grow. Give them the opportunity to share their opinions. Because when they get to share their opinions, their input, and then it's valued, sometimes acted upon again, it's not always going to be acted upon. It fosters a sense of belonging and importance. I'm important to this team. Think about that for a second. The power, the influence we have on the people who report to us. They bring you a new idea. You acknowledge that that's a really good idea. Let me look into it. What do you think they're going to do when they go home that night? How excited are they going to be that their boss listened to them? That they were able to bring this great idea to the forefront? That their boss respects them and trusts them enough to listen to them? But as a boss, and as a leader, you got to make sure that you get back to them as to the disposition of that idea. Humans need that. But humans more importantly need to know that their voice matters. It boosts their self-esteem, their motivation. And like I mentioned earlier, their job satisfaction. A happy team is a productive team. In this sense of validation and recognition, that stimulates intrinsic motivation. It makes your employees more dedicated, proactive. Feeling a part of an, an important and successful team, engaged. And when you create an environment where opinions are valued and considered, it not only enhances individual performance, but it strengthens your team's cohesion and drives success. When your team is thinking optimistically all the time, They've got a vested interest in this because their idea may make them more successful. Remember that. It'll make their job easier. Sometimes you're going to find easy ways that will run under your nose the whole time to surpass expectation and drive exceptional results. It's, you've got the next answer in the brains out there of the people who are with you every day. Tap into it. Especially your sales team there. Generally going to be high eyes on the disc survey and high eyes are very creative. They're always looking for innovative change. So don't keep it all trapped into them. Don't let them just share their ideas amongst each other. Share it with you. Share it with your boss. That's why my boss was on the phone with Francis. He wanted to hear these ideas too. So in wrapping this up, by creating creative thinking and innovation in a culture where your sales team gets to get tapped into, listened to, sometimes acted upon, that's going to drive exceptional results. This tactic will equip you, by the way, with the knowledge and tools needed to inspire and reward your sales team for their innovative thinking or their creative thinking. And you're going to be the benefactor. Your company's going to be the benefactor in increased performance. It's an ongoing process. You can't start and stop. You just can't. I, it's that right there as being sprinters of great new ideas. And then for whatever reason, something gets in your way and you drop it. They're losing trust in you. They're losing motivation because of that. Whatever happened to, that was such a great idea and we never did it again. Can't do that. It's the long game. It's the long game. But if you set a culture that more or less expects innovation through you, through the proper processes, and you can provide them with the, the right resources, which are generally your ears, that you lead by example, that helps them continually be thinking about ways to be better themselves, building that muscle. 
unlock their creative potential, drive exceptional results in a landscape that's always evolving. It matters a lot. And please dispel the myth, the misconceptions, such as only new people have great ideas. That's stale. But you need to empower every team member, understand, listen to their creative ideas, create the vehicle for them to share them, remove barriers to innovation. That barrier is usually going to be management. Any obstacles, get those out of the way. And those obstacles are generally mindsets. You can always do better. And it's not just you that has to come up with the ideas. Encourage, recognize, reward great ideas. Praising and rewarding creates more creative ideas. And if you can channel these ideas around sales goals, now we can sell more stuff, sell more services, get more clients. That alignment to the ultimate goal, it's really smart. Be optimistic. Be positive. Explore how, go try some things. Explore how you can cultivate this environment. Find it, find your way. Listen. And act on the ones that make the most sense, but don't ever leave them hanging. Sometimes you're going to have to take the time to explain why we maybe tried this before and it didn't work, or there may be some law against it, some regulatory law against it, or a multitude of other reasons, but they're devoid of that source, that, I, that, that knowledge of why we can't do it. Provide the why. And if there's not a good why, you need to consider it. Keep your ego in check. Be open to being wrong. Be creative. Drive creative, drive creativity. Hope this was helpful to you. Get out there, get after it, let's make it happen.